Hi, my name is Lona Mothania Uchido and I'm making it one of my life's mission to demystify the speech therapy field and to empower more parents on what they can start to do in order to optimize their child's communication outcomes. So whether you want your child to talk more or talk better, learn better and overall optimize their potential. So stay tuned and feel free to send in any topics on speech and language development you'd like to know. This episode of My Opinion About series is another slightly controversial one, but I'll take a crack at it anyway. Adenoidectomy, should my child have one or not? I've often joked that Kenya, or at least Nairobi, must have the largest population of children living without their adenoids, and sometimes both their adenoids and their tonsils. I mean, I say it as a joke, obviously, but is it something in the water? I definitely no laughing matter. So what is adenoidectomy? I'll explain. Ever had a child who always, like constantly seems to get blocked nose and is perhaps a noisy breather when asleep or simply more of a mouth breather. So not breathing through the nose, but more the mouth. Have you had your child assessed by the ENT? So ear, nose and throat specialist and surgery has been recommended. If that's the case, then the so mentioned surgery would most likely be an adenoidectomy. Yeah, a bit of a mouthful. So what are adenoids? Adenoids are a part of the immune system. So that is, they help the body fight infections. And they are located up high in the throat. So the back of the throat um, of the nasal cavity. So if you licked the roof of your mouth with the tip of your tongue and dragged your tongue all the way back as far as it could go, then that would be about where the adenoids are located, just so slightly up. Yeah, that'll be at the entrance of the nasal cavity. So in order to keep you healthy, the adenoids catch any germs from the nose before they cause the infection. So it's as simple as that really. But over time, they can become swollen as they do their work, which causes the child to have difficulty with breathing and sleeping. And this could also cause some pain. So it's not always comfortable. And large adenoids can also cause a blockage to the tube that connects the ears to the nose, which helps to drain fluid from the nose during colds, etc. So when a child's tubes, um, tube, this tube that connects, which is referred to as a eustachian tube, is not working well, this can cause a child to retain fluid in the middle ears and have temporary hearing loss, which is not good for speech and language development. So that would cause a delay. So that's the connection, adenoids not talking. So should your child have an adenoidectomy? Well, if this is indicated or called for, your child's ENT doctor will advise. What are the symptoms for enlarged or infected adenoids? Well, there's quite a few. So if your child is breathing through the mouth frequently, or the nose is always stuffy or running without any illness, or they have a dried mouth or cracked lips often, or they're a noisy breather or frequent or persistent ear infections, which by the way, not all kids complain of having an ear infection. Sometimes you might even have oozing. Or if they are snoring or just having poor quality um, sleep, if your child exhibits any of the above symptoms, then have the ENT see them to determine what could be causing the symptoms. It may or may not be as a result of swollen adenoids. So an adenoidectomy or removal of the adenoids would be recommended if your child has difficulty breathing quietly during sleep, which is also a condition referred to as sleep apnea, due to the enlarged adenoids. Yeah, so that would be one reason why they would want to do an adenoidectomy or repeated infection of the adenoids that does not resolve with antibiotics or recurring ear infections that doesn't respond to antibiotics either or fluid retention in the middle ear due to enlarged adenoids. So very often the ENT might decide to remove both the adenoids and the tonsils. Um, a procedure referred to as tonsilloadenoidectomy. Blah. Yeah, mouthful. The tonsils do the same job as the adenoids, i.e., they prevent germs um, from causing, you know, like from you know from the nose, so that you don't child doesn't get sick. So the tonsils sit at the back of the throat. Not everyone who needs an adenoidectomy will also require tonsil removal, and vice versa. 
but the procedure in itself is pretty fast so the adenoidectomy or tonsillar adenoidectomy and is more in most cases it should take less than an hour the child is given a general anesthesia and so will be asleep for the duration of the procedure so they're not going to feel any pain and the ENT cuts away the adenoid tissue um, the surgeon usually will show you the tissue that they have removed. Oftentimes it's black and it's infected and doesn't look too pretty to look at. And if there are no other complications, the child is usually fit to go home on the same day. So it's a very standard procedure. Actually within a few hours of undergoing the surgery and there are no adverse effects from the adenoidectomy or the tonsillectomy or both, um, but it is worth noting that adenoids can, in rare occasions, grow back. Yeah, not often, but it can. In childhood is when adenoids are generally the largest, but they shrink or disappear during teenage years. So that's something worth noting as well. And according to research as well, removing a child's adenoids may increase their chance of developing respiratory or allergic conditions later on. I am witnessing a very high percentage of children who have had either their adenoids taken out or their tonsils taken out or the procedure has been recommended and i often wonder you know all of these cases are they indicated was the procedure actually indicated and my feelings are that parents need to be empowered about some of these conditions for which surgery is often the first call um, so you need to know what it is that you need to look out for to approve that surgery. As a parent, you need to make sure that everything has been exhausted before signing your child off to theater or to any intrusive procedure really for that matter. I do not dispute that there are cases for which an adenoidectomy or a tonsillar adenoidectomy is warranted, but why are there so many children in Nairobi who require the procedure? Is it possible to protect your child against frequent infections? I know it might not always be possible, you know, but can it be a little possible perhaps, you know, very likely that it is a little possible. And, you know, by keeping your child maybe away from children who other children who have infections, you know, just whatever you can do around the home and making that decision after you have weighed all your options and feel very definite that it was the right decision for you to do for your child then. You know, as opposed to feeling like you are probably being pressured into a procedure that you weren't completely aware of. So all I'm doing right now is giving you the information. It is out there. You could always just ask your ENT as well to supply you with information about the procedure ahead of time so that you are actually making a decision that is um, coming from an informed position. Well, there you have it. I hope this episode has been informative. Please check out some of our other resources to learn more about any of the new topics that this series have raised for you. As always, thank you so much for